Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at and cover an overview of Cisco's SD-WAN solution. We'll first of all start off by taking a look at some common examples of wide area networks and the drawbacks of each. From here we'll then cover a high level overview of the different Cisco SD-WAN components and how they all fit together. If you stick around until the end of the video, I'll show you how you can demo a live SD-1 solution to get a feel for how everything hangs together and allow you to have a play with it in real time. In addition to this, a sandbox environment for you to have a play with. This video forms part of the CCMP Enterprise Core Exam Series 350-401. The exam topics covered in this video are 1.4a, which is to describe the working principles of SD-1 control and data plane elements and 1.4b, which is to describe the working principles of traditional wide area networks and SD-WAN solutions. So today's enterprises face a number of challenges with their traditional WAN setups. These can include the cost for things like provisioning expensive MPLS circuits at each location, especially if we have more than one circuit in order to facilitate redundancy purposes. These MPLS circuits can add up to a considerable cost and come at a much higher cost than a regular internet circuit would. In addition to this, you're paying a lot more for things like service level agreements due to the critical nature of the circuits. On top of the issue of cost, the time waiting for our MPLS circuits to be commissioned can take a considerable time, especially in comparison to a regular internet connection. If we have a new site we want to add to the network, we can be extremely delayed whilst we wait for our MPLS circuit to be installed, holding back the opening of the new site. Another issue we face with the number of sites we add to our wide area network is the number of challenges we face when it comes to things like managing each device via CLI, the configuration management of devices, and confirming failover between circuits is working. This brings us on to our next pitfall of traditional WANs, and that's the unpredictability of application performance. An example of this being our connection from a branch location to a service located on the internet. Take for example Salesforce. The application may be working absolutely fine at one of our locations, however we may be experiencing poor latency or jitter on the circuit, which in turn is causing our VoIP calls to be degraded, but unnoticeable when using web applications. In our current wide area network setup, we'd need to monitor our circuits and application performance in order to determine if there are any issues affecting users, or wait for them to report it. From here, we'd then need to potentially manually fail over traffic to another circuit at the location, if they have one. This means an engineer would need to manually diagnose the issue and then manually resolve the problem, creating a poor experience for the user and also time spent resolving the issue. Finally, we have issues in our traditional wide area network setups with things like complex network setups required in order to support a modern IT shift to cloud services or even back calling all user traffic back to the data center to access central resources or for security purposes. So before we go in depth with Cisco's SD-1 solution and the benefits it provides, let's go over a couple of example scenarios of how we might have our wide area network set up at the moment. First off, here's a basic example of a basic branch network connecting back to head office over an MPLS circuit. MPLS circuits tend to be extremely reliable, however come at a considerably higher cost, therefore usually taking up a considerable chunk of an IT budget. In addition to this, we also require a high bandwidth MPLS circuit at head office, depending on the amount of branch locations we have, in order to facilitate the traffic backhauled back to head office, significantly adding to the cost. In addition to this, we may also route traffic destined for the internet back from the branch to head office, to allow us to perform packet inspection and filter traffic accordingly. Again, this provides both a reliance on the head office having bandwidth capacity to backhaul the data when extended to a larger scale. On top of this, now more than ever, as more enterprises migrate their services to the cloud, our outdated and existing network infrastructure becomes more complex and harder to manage. This in turn makes it harder for IT to provide a reliable IT experience to customers without the need for manual interventions and monitoring. Cisco's SD-WAN platform aims to address the shortcomings our traditional wide area networks fall down on. These include increased bandwidth by allowing enterprises to leverage a transport independent WAN for lower costs and higher diversity. What this allows us to do is use multiple transport networks such as 3G and 4G connections, internet circuits, satellite, MPLS or even dedicated circuits for our underlying physical network. The benefit of this is that these circuits also come in at extremely lower cost than the traditional MPLS circuits do. Cisco's SD-WAN architecture also allows us to lower the cost and risk of maintaining our wide area network by introducing simple automation and orchestration. This therefore removes the need for manual intervention or input by IT staff. 
Within Cisco's SD-WAN architecture, it provides in-depth analysis, including carrier performances at our branch and geographic locations, the uptime of our WAN, V-Edge routers and circuits, and application bandwidth overviews for each category of application. Cisco's SD-WAN solution monitors all of our WAN connections at location and then keeps track of key performance metrics. With this information, it can automatically select the connection with the lowest latency and highest throughput to use. In addition to this, with the SD-WAN's ability to allow us to use any underlying transit network, this then allows for rapid deployment of connectivity at remote locations due to us not being dependent on a single transport model like MPLS. The SD-WAN platform aims to increase the network experience had by users with its monitoring tools and use of automation and orchestration. It does this by providing users with the most reliable connection possible at the location, depending on the application or service they're using. This means that if another circuit at the location has better performance for the application the user is using, the SD-WAN solution will automatically reroute traffic to the better circuit without intervention. On top of this, if the SD-WAN solution determines the performance will be greater by using a circuit at another location, the traffic will be automatically rerouted to the remote circuit instead. Next, Cisco's SD-WAN solution aims to offer enhanced security benefits to the enterprise by providing end-to-end -end network segmentation, traffic encryption, and a zero-trust security model. So now we understand the benefits that Cisco's SD-WAN offers over our traditional wide area network setups, Let's take a look at an overview of Cisco's SD-WAN solution. So first things first, Cisco's SD-WAN solution is an overlay architecture. What this means is a way of using software to create a logical network that sits on top of our underlay network, this being our physical infrastructure of circuits. An example of this can be seen on the screen now. SD-WAN also allows us to extend the push towards software-defined networking into our wide area network. This allows us to automate the process of ensuring end-to-end -end throughput and performance are maintained for users. Traffic can be monitored and managed automatically by the SD-WAN platform. There are a number of key components that make up Cisco's SD-WAN offering. We'll take a look at these in more depth shortly, however these are vManage, vSmart, vEdge, vBond and vAnalytics. Some more information before we get onto those. Cisco's SD-WAN solution is a rebrand of the original Viptela solution that Cisco acquired in 2017. In addition to this, Cisco's SD-WAN solution is split into three planes, as shown in the example on the screen. First of all, the management and orchestration plane is responsible for central monitoring and configuration, in addition to assisting with automatic onboarding of SD-WAN routers into the overlay network. Next up, the control plane. This is used to build and maintain the network topology and make decisions on where traffic should flow. Finally, the data plane is responsible for forwarding the packets based on the decisions that are made by the control plane. As we start to go over the different components that are used as part of the SD-WAN solution, you'll start to see how this all hangs together. So now we've got that out of the way, we'll start off by taking a look at the vManage component. Now this component is basically the network monitoring system for the entire SD-WAN solution. It provides us with a single pane of glass view that allows us to view and manage the entire SD-1 setup. We can control vManage by using either the graphical interface in a web browser or via REST API. Finally, within vManage, we create the device configuration, push configuration to devices and manage the SD-1 solution as a whole. It's worth noting that the vManage application can be hosted locally on-premise or within the cloud. Next up, the vSmart controller. This is basically the brain of the whole SD-WAN solution. It's used to implement the policies and configuration created on the vManage component and then implement them on our devices throughout the network. It's also used to communicate directly with each and every branch router using a Datagram Transport Layer Security Tunnel, or DTLS for short. As the vSmart controller communicates to all branch routers, it will advertise routers, routes and security and policy information for the routers connected to it. This is why it's classed as the brain of the solution. It does this by using a protocol called Overlay Management Protocol, or OMP for short. As before, the vSmart appliance can be hosted locally on-premise or within the cloud. Next up, the vEdge routers. These are the routers that sit at our branch locations and can be either software or hardware. There are two SD-WAN routers available that you might see mentioned. These are the vEdge and the C-Edge. The difference between the two is that vEdge is the original Viptela platform that runs Viptela's code, and C-Edge is Viptela's software integrated with Cisco's iOS XE. The vEdge routers themselves will connect to the vSmart controllers via DTLS tunnels, as mentioned previously. 
There are a number of Cisco routers that support and can be utilized within Cisco's SD-WAN solution, as shown on the screen now. However, these devices must be running the SD-WAN specific iOS XE firmware. We'll now take a look at the vBond component. This is used to bond everything together within the SD-WAN solution, as well as authenticating the vSmart controllers and the vEdge routers that connect to it. From here, it will then coordinate the connectivity and orchestration between them all. It's also responsible for the zero-touch provisioning process as part of the solution, and is the only device that requires a public IP address so that all devices can connect to it to communicate with the required components. It's the vBond's job to understand how the network topology is constructed and share this information across the other components of the solution. It's important to note that this component can run as a virtual machine on-premise or run as an agent service on one of our vEdge routers. The final component we'll take a look at is vAnalytics. This is an optional component to the SD1 solution that provides the in-depth analysis and assurance services we've discussed. It can provide in-depth recommendations based on the health and traffic passing through the network to automate the amount of time and effort required to manage a wide area network. It can also be utilized to predict how much bandwidth is actually required at our locations. Take for example, we have 100 megabits of bandwidth at one of our locations, but our average usage is only around 10 megabits per second. As such, using the vAnalytics tool, we now have the ability to downgrade the circuit and save some cost. In addition to everything we've already discussed in this video, the SD1 solution has a set of functionalities to address our organization's push to cloud services. The SD1 service caters for software as a service applications like Salesforce and infrastructure as a service like AWS or Azure. This functionality within Cisco's SD1 is known as Cloud OnRamp. The first offering we'll take a look at is Cloud OnRamp for Software as a Service. What this aims to do is provide optimal performance for our users that are using software applications hosted within the cloud. It does this by automatically selecting the best performing internet connection within the network to be used. An example of this can be seen on the screen now. Here you can see we have two locations, a head office and a local branch both with direct internet connections to the internet. What the SD1 solution will do is send a HTTP probe to the software as a service application from all internet circuits. From this probe, it will measure the latency and loss to give the application a quality of experience rating for each circuit. If another circuit provides a better experience for the application, the SD1 solution will automatically route user traffic via the circuit with a better quality of experience rating, thus increasing the experience for users. An example of this using our example, let's say that the SD1 solution determines that the application we're using on the internet has a better quality of experience rating using the circuit at head office. It will take into account the loss and latency occurred whilst routing traffic via head office. And if this provides a better experience for the application our user is using, then the solution will route our traffic via the head office circuit automatically. It will then continue monitoring, and if it determines that the quality of experience is now better at the branch circuit, the traffic will be routed back as before. The last offering we need to take a look at is Cloud OnRamp for Infrastructure as a Service. What this allows us to do is extend our SD1 solution into the public cloud. It does this by deploying a virtual vEdge router, thus allowing us to connect directly to our infrastructure hosted within platforms like Azure and AWS. An example of this can be seen on the screen now. Before I end the video, I just wanted to show you how you can get your hands on some experience with the SD1 solution and take a deeper look at the configuration and how all the components hang together. The live demo can be accessed via the link in the description as long as you have a Cisco SSO account. As you can see on the screen now, the live demo contains all of the SD1 components we've just discussed as well as the vAnalytics feature. In addition to this, you've also got the ability within Cisco's DevNet environment to sandbox the whole SD1 solution, which I've also provided a link for in the description. Feel free to give this a test and get a better understanding for how SD1 works. And there we have it. That's a complete overview of Cisco's SD1 architecture, the benefits it provides, and the components that make up the solution. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Apart from that, remember to subscribe and like the video for more CCMP Enterprise videos. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll catch you next time.